television division of the Columbia Broadcasting System takes pleasure in introducing Mr. William Lodge, Vice President in Charge of Engineering. How do you do? We're going to show you some colored film. This film was shot in Studio 72, a CBS color television studio in New York City. We've done this because it is so difficult to explain with mere words all of the activity, equipment, and apparatus that is used in a color television studio. You'll not only see the equipment in the studio, but I'm sure you'll recognize in color the faces of a number of performers you see on your home screen. We take you now right into Studio 72 by film. First color show actually in rehearsal. This is a rehearsal of the color version of Toast of the Town. There's Ed Sullivan talking to Marlo Lewis, the producer of Toast, and Richard Lewin, the executive producer of CBS Color Television. They've been discussing and planning this show for eight weeks prior to this rehearsal. Here's a young lady you probably know. She's Janice Page. And as you can see, black and white television didn't do her justice at all. Now this might look like a bad dream, but actually it's just a high view of Miss Page rehearsing her number. Miss Page goes through this portable door, and after another camera has picked her up on the other side, the door is removed by stage hands. Something didn't go right in the number, so John Ray, the director, tries to find the trouble. There are probably a dozen little groups like this in various parts of the studio, all thrashing out their own particular problems. This is a good view of some of the overhanging lights in Studio 72. There are 600 individual light units hanging overhead. If they were all turned on at once, they would supply 800,000 watts of light. The problem of controlling this mass of lights is solved by an electronic switchboard, which you see here. This complicated piece of equipment is an electronic brain that does everything but talk. With this switchboard, we're able to get over one million combinations of the lights in the studio. This part of the switchboard is called the preset dimming board. And those white things you see are small dials that can be rotated by hand. To make a light brighter, you simply rotate the dial that controls it till you have the degree of brightness you want. The unique thing about these dials is they not only control each light individually, but that combinations of them can be dimmed to the proper degree and set up ahead of the time you want them. The man sitting at this main control panel is punching the buttons that actually cause the light changes out in the studio. After the dimming dials have been set correctly, this fellow can punch a button that turns on the entire combination of lights that were set up beforehand. When he pushes the dimming lever in his left hand, he can cause the lights to come up slowly. The white buttons on top would make the combination turn on instantaneously. This is the place where the lights in the studio are actually plugged into the electronic board. The operator is connecting up various combinations of lights from the studio to the dimming board. Back on the floor, the tremendous job of putting together the color version of Toast of the Town goes on. This is a look at just a small part of the countless pieces of scenery, props, and equipment necessary for a show of this size. As you can see, Studio 72 in rehearsal looks a little like Grand Central Station during the rush hour. Yet every one of the hundreds of people working in the studio has a definite job to do that contributes to the result you see at home. You're now standing on stage looking toward the audience and control room. Notice that every inch of the stage is painted with some kind of design. This is important in color work because the natural gray floor would ruin an otherwise colorful scene. Everything that's put in front of the color television camera must be approved, not only by the producers and directors from the artistic point of view, but also by the technical staff of color experts. The attention to every detail is shown by this fountain set. The painted floor pattern, the costumes, even the colored water in the fountains all combine to make this happy result. Here you can get a good idea of the size of the color television cameras. 
Marlo Lewis is checking a shot with the cameraman while they take a little rest from pushing those monsters around the studio. This was one of the most exciting numbers in the show. Nancy Crompton, shown here talking to Ed Sullivan, danced on that full-size carousel. Dancing plays the most important part in a large musical show. These dancers have been rehearsing eight hours a day for the past week. What they're doing now is called a camera rehearsal. The cameraman must know every detail of the dance before they can put it on the air smoothly. Here is something that not everyone is privileged to see. You're about to see smiling Ed Sullivan really smile. Actually, Ed does a lot of smiling, and he's considered one of the most relaxed performers in the business. Well, he has to be in order to live through these rehearsals and then go on the air tonight as if it were a very simple thing. Mr. Sullivan not only performs on the show, but also produces it in conjunction with Marlo Lewis. They are known for going to any length to get the right thing in front of their cameras. Here's a good example right here. This is Eartha Kitt's number. The furs the girls are wearing are worth one million dollars. They're also wearing a jewel collection valued at two million dollars. And if you look closely, you can see two of the many guards that were on stage at all times. This is a good place to see the mic boom and the camera crane at work. The mic boom is that long pole-like thing that's always hovering over the heads of the performer. Its purpose is to pick up anything the performer says or sings. As you can see, the camera crane is capable of rising above the action on the stage and shooting down from an angle that would be impossible for ordinary floor cameras. It takes the perfect coordination of five men to follow Miss Kitt with this camera. Everyone in the studio takes his orders from this control room when the show is on the air. With the use of an efficient communication system, the many people working in the studio are able to receive instructions as the show progresses. Those things that look like television sets are really color monitors. Each camera has its own monitor, and by watching this monitor, the director can see the picture that the camera is taking. This technician is working on the control panel of a single camera. The small monitor directly in front of him is a black and white monitor. If you look closely, you can see the color bars on the top row of monitors. Unfortunately, they're not very distinct due to the strong light that was necessary to shoot this film. If you can visualize 30 to 40 men in the studio all doing a job like this man is doing, you will perhaps get an idea of the complexities of the technical end of color television. Now let's take a look at another type of show being done in color. It's in the same studio, but Toast of the Town is gone, and the mystery show Danger has moved in. We have a different camera crew out on the floor, different performers, a different producer and director, and different problems. The man in the blue suit coat is Byron Paul, the director of Danger. As the director, Byron has had to adapt himself to color in the same way as the technicians and engineers. He must be acquainted with every problem that might arise in the course of bringing his show to life. In another part of the studio, this performer is having her makeup checked. Unfortunately, the natural skin of a performer comes across on the color camera as shiny and red as a big Macintosh apple. Byron seems to have solved his problem, though. Now he goes back to the control room. This will give you a fairly good idea of the operating conditions on the studio floor. Looks a little confusing, doesn't it? Well, it is. At least it is at this point in rehearsal. What you're seeing is a simple scene change from one set to another. A mass of lights overhead have had to be completely reset in new positions for this particular show, and as you've probably noticed, they're much lower than they were on Toast of the Town. 
Now, although this looks confusing, actually every one of these people know exactly where they're going and why. At least they will know by the time they get on the air. In fact, Danger was a huge success in color, and everything went smoothly. Two weeks later, the best of Broadway had its premiere in Studio 72. They presented The Royal Family by George S. Kaufman and Edna Ferber. Again, the 600 lights in the studio have been completely repositioned. And again, we have an entirely different group of people working in the studio. Here's something that happened in rehearsal that was not seen on the air. When Frederick March made his entrance here, one of his fellow actors carried a parrot on his shoulder. The parrot was supposed to sit quietly and behave himself, of course, but at this very moment, the bird became bored with the whole thing and decided to fly around and look things over. Alan Hayes, Claudette Colbert, and Frederick March waited patiently while the parrot's trainer was summoned and the bird captured again. A monkey was supposed to be used in this scene also, but he didn't like the way things were going at all, so he climbed up into the overhead lights and stayed there till the performance was over. This is a good shot of Helen Hayes and Frederick March thrashing out an acting problem that has arisen. From the actor's point of view, television is a very, very demanding job. They must learn a complete hour-long play in about two weeks' time, and the first time they perform it is also the last time, so everything must be perfect for that one performance. This scene with Charles Coburn gives you an idea of the detail and authenticity of the scenery. In black and white television, a slightly ragged piece of scenery wasn't too noticeable because it didn't come across on the camera. Well, in color television, everything must be perfect. Absolute realism is required because the color camera shows exactly what it sees. Now the actors are going from one room to another. The camera and boom follow them to the door, and a second camera and boom are waiting to pick them up in the next room. This is just one of thousands of moves that have to be covered for you to see the finished play in one continuous action. And now we're going to have to leave these people to their work. We hope that this film has given you a rough idea of what goes on in Studio 72. The task of putting on a color television show is a tremendous one, as you can see. There are times when the whole thing looks like chaos. But actually, it's organized chaos, and there comes a moment before airtime when everything makes sense to everyone. And the result is what you see at home. Great musical shows. Exciting dramatic productions. And happy comedy. All done in full color.